Greetings to one and all and welcome to our worship service for Sunday, May the 3rd. We find ourselves entering into May and we still find ourselves in unfamiliar circumstances and un un unusual circumstances. Today we're going to begin our worship service here in our chapel. And we're going to progress to, to look at the different various areas that we, we gather for worship traditionally. So let us now prepare our hearts for worship. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and the gate for the sheep. He leads us in right paths and we shall fear no evil. Jesus said, I came to give life and life abundant. Come, let us worship the Lord our God. In our current circumstances, fear can certainly rule the day. 
yet we serve a faithful and loyal God who walks along beside us. Let us convey our understanding of the living God by reciting Psalm 23 together. Please join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. one of the earliest liturgical practices in worship, this simple ritual provides us with an essential reminder that we who are followers of Christ are called to be peacemakers, striving to live in peace with one another. One of the things I missed most during this time of quarantine is the passing of the peace on Sunday mornings. I miss that time of being able to give and receive hugs from those in our church family as we remind each other that we are there in that place because of God's love. As we pass the peace today, I ask you to pass on that peace to others in our church family with a phone call, a text, a FaceTime call, a note, or in any other way that comes to mind. So I now say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. John 10, verses 1 through 10. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them all out as his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. We have come to the time in our service to clear our minds, open our ears to listen, and our hearts for the prayers of the people. Let us bow in prayer. Holy and loving God, we come humbly before you this day and we lay the prayers of our hearts at your feet. Holy God, we thank you that your ways are not like our ways, that you alone are steadfast and you alone are faithful. You give us your unconditional love despite our ways and the world we live in. You will never leave or forsake us. 
We thank you for your creation that you see as very good. Help us to be good stewards in a manner pleasing to you and to nurture your creation for future generations. Compassionate God, we lift up those who are hurting into your care. For those grieving, comfort them that they would feel your presence. For those in need around us, may we be your hands and feet to them. May we engage them with your grace. Supreme God, guide those who have authority over us. May they be mindful of those they rule over. May they look to the interest of the people. May they lead with truth and honesty, loving kindness, imparting justice to all. Living God, help us, your children, made in your image to refresh ourselves with your love and grace. Strengthen us and give us the courage to make a difference in the lives of those we encounter. Healing God, fear all kinds are frightening the nations. Fear of the coronavirus grips the world. Lord, we lift to you. The nations, communities, families, and individuals most affected by this outbreak. We pray for those on the front line, all the medical personnel, the first responders, those who continue to serve our needs, the government officials seeking to respond. Our hearts ache for those already grieving. Let them know that they are not alone that the God of the universe stands at their side. Let us now have a moment of silence for those who are on our hearts and in need of prayer. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ and pray with him saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Part of our worship to the living God is to, is to give back a portion of what we have received in gratitude and thankfulness for all that God has given unto us. It's an opportunity to, to give our time, our talents, our treasures, and, and I thank you for all the many different ways that you've tried to do that over these past few weeks as we've tried to navigate uh, not being able to be with one another. If you'd like to make a financial offering, you can do so by just sending a check to the church or going online and making a donation there. Uh, as I said, we have multiple ways that we are trying to reach out to, to utilize the time and the talents that, that we have on our hands. And so look for opportunities to do that. Let us continue to worship the Lord our God with our tithes and with our offerings. circumstances that we find ourselves in, in being isolated and not being able to gather to worship with one another, but just, just to be able to reflect because of the pace of life has changed on, on many things. Our 
Reading today comes from the book of Acts. It takes us back to the second chapter and it, it, it is a time just after Peter and, and the other disciples have been up in the upper room. The, the Spirit has come upon, upon them and they've been in the marketplace. And we're told that in the, at the end of uh, verse 41 in chapter 2, those who were welcomed his message were baptized and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The church had essentially begun. There were those who had begun to, to follow Jesus Christ. And, and so that's the point that we enter into our scripture reading for today. Those who began to, to follow were termed followers of the way in the early part of the book of Acts. Even, even Saul, when he was looking for letters to go to Damascus to, to persecute those who were Christ followers, spoke about them as followers of the way. What does it mean? to be followers of the way. Well, that first 3,000 3, began to, to, to understand what that meant and to, to start to, to give form to what it would be. And so we find that in our scripture reading of today. So let's just read it. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And let's listen to what the Spirit is telling the church this day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and all held things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. First thing that we hear from those who had who had being baptized and who had accepted Jesus Christ, the, the very first words is that they devoted themselves. They devoted themselves. The, the Greek translation for that word that is used for devoted is steadfastly attentive. Steadfastly attentive. It also means to, to continue all the time, to be actively engaged, to, to participate in. It became their way of life. It was a, a priority for them to go about doing it. And so they devoted themselves. And what did they devote themselves to, we are told? The apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayers. These are words that are aimed at all of us. Aimed at all of us because of the, of the consequences of what it means to, to gather in the way that the, that the first followers did. Because it, it builds up a foundation. And from that foundation comes many things in terms of what it means to be a follower of the way. To be a Christ follower. It empowers us. There's a transformation that takes place not only in us but, but in those that we encounter and those we go about meeting. There's no true definition of what the apostles' teaching actually was. We have a, 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 a precursor to this in terms of Peter going out into the marketplace and, and simply telling the story of Jesus, laying out the, the gospel of who Jesus was. And the reality, we, we have it laid out before us here in the scriptures. They didn't have the Bible. We're told that they met in the temple that they, they still engaged with the, the scriptures of the Old Testament, but they now saw it with new eyes. New eyes and a, a new lens interpreted in, in the fact that Jesus Christ was risen. And he was the Messiah. We're all called to dwell upon the scriptures. To, to delve into them, to devote ourselves to them. And whether that means being involved in a Bible study or, or a daily devotional we hear the word on a, on a Sunday proclaimed, it's, it's one and all of those things. And so we're encouraged, even now and today, to, to be involved and 
to devote ourselves to, to looking at what these words from Scripture mean and, and adding to our understanding about what we're called to do. The second one, well, that's the one that we like to do, fellowship. Fellowship with, with one another, being involved with, with one another inside of the church, spending time with fellow believers, fostering those relationships that we have, which is something that we've been trying to do for, for this past year, is to, is to get deeper in our relationships and our fellowship with one another. A couple of things have been taking place over these past few weeks. <clears throat> One is the expression that, that people are missing gathering together. They're, they're missing being with other believers, coming to worship on a Sunday. Our monthly potlucks, being involved in the, in the Bible studies and their small groups. Those things have been missed. Why? Because they're an important part of who we are. And again, the, the first followers devoted themselves to, to being with one another. And we've tried to find different expressions of what that looks like. It's not easy to, to have a phone call conversation and, and have that sense of togetherness, and, and yet that's what we have at the moment. Even a, a remote one where, where there's only engagement from someone reading a, a text or, a, or an email or a card. It's still an attempt to enter into fellowship and to be with one another. Being in relationship with each other is a paramount part of being a follower of Jesus Christ. And so we're called into that. And I would, I would encourage you to reflect on, on, the, on the fact that you are missing being in fellowship with each other as believers. Because that's who we're called to be in fellowship with. It wasn't a call for, for those who had come to understand to, to be out with other people. No, it was to be in the fellowship of those who believed alongside of them. That doesn't mean that we don't go out and be involved with the world. But there's a, a definite call to be together with fellow believers, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to, and to fellowship. And then it says the breaking of bread, and we always like to, to have a, a good meal, we like to bring food to our, our own small gatherings, and there's a, there's a double nuance here with the, with the breaking of bread. There's that, there's that call and that understanding of the Lord's Supper. We're called to, and we, we're going to be celebrating it today. But there's also just the, the breaking of bread together at, at meal times and family times. And what does that mean to, to break bread in, in those circumstances? And, and we see later on in the text that, that that's drawn out. It means both. The two disciples who were, who were on the road to Emmaus, when Jesus joined them, they, they ended their journey and they called Jesus in to, to be with them and they broke bread together breaking of bread. When we come to, to celebrate the Lord's Supper, it's, it's much more than just a simple table. It has deep meaning for us as, as followers in, in terms of what the Lord's Supper actually means. It's a, it's a sign and seal of our community and our relationship with the living God. It seals all those things that God has done. It's a, a recognition of God and, and God's, uh, it's thankfulness to God and, and God's steadfastness and faithfulness over the sands of time as, as humanity has walked away and God says, I'll come back, I want you back, time and time again. Until the fullness of time was reached in his son. And we have that remembrance of Jesus because he was the one who stood at this table Recognize that back on Monday, Thursday. It's also recognition of the, of the invocation of the Holy Spirit, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit that, that somehow takes these elements and, and makes them into, into mysteriously the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And we, we are gathered not just with ourselves, but, but those who have gone before us, those who, who meet in other parts, we're drawn up into Christ's presence. We, we recognize all of that when we, when we come to the Lord's Supper. We recognize all that God has done. It's a sign of God's everlasting covenant to us that he will never leave us or forsake us. That we are in relationship with him. 
It's a call upon us that as we are fed and nourished, that we are to feed and nourish others. It's a part and parcel of who we are. And we reaffirm our baptismal promises as we come to this table. It's a remembrance of, of our baptism in terms of everything that we, we, that we said that we would live into and the claim upon our lives. We recommit ourselves to the love and grace of God in and through Jesus Christ, to one another and to others that we encounter in the world, our neighbours. All of that is drawn in when we come to the table. And we have to understand that and, and that, that part of that devotion is, is recognising all those elements of what it means. And then there's prayer. Our relationship and our communion and our communication with God. Individually, as a body of Christ, we raise up our concerns and we raise up our intercessions and we raise up our supplications. We, we had to a 24 hour prayer vigil before Monday, Thursday, and, and we raised all sorts of things up. Lifting up to God and to the presence of God the, the names, the circumstances, the situations that, that are on our hearts, that, that we want to lift up to God and say, This is God, this God, this is where we're at, this is where I'm at. I know your will be done. Your will will be done. But God, this is our desires. This is what we want to lift up to you. And so we pray. The apostles teaching, praying, being involved with one another in fellowship and the breaking of bread. Those first followers devoted themselves to doing just that. And as a result of, of their devotion to that, then the very next verse, verse 43 says, awe came upon everyone. Why? Because wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. There was, a, there, was, there was an expectation that God was going to be at work. That word awe is actually in the Greek, the word phobos, it's the word fear, it's the, it's the fear of God. Why? Because it's the, it's the presence of the living God doing something in and our midst which is not humanly possible. It's a recognition of that. It's, a, it's, it's that, that understanding of the disciples on the boat when they were with Jesus. You know, they were there and the waves were crashing around. They, they were a little bit worried about the storm. They, they'd, been on the, they'd been on the sea before. They, they knew the implications. But when Jesus calmed it, boy were they afraid. That took their fear to a completely new level because it was something that they couldn't recognize. They couldn't control, but they knew it was there. Being devoted in all those areas and, and living into who we are as the body of Christ gives us that expectation that God is going to be present and, and God is going to be active. And, and it doesn't mean that everything's going to be okay. We've spoken about that before. But there's an expectation that God is in our midst and, and God is present and God is active. That the things that we see are, are God's activity and are not human endeavour in the world. It's not a coincidence. It's not fate. It's the presence of the living God in our lives. And so we have an expectation. And we, and we reflect the, the stories that goes on in, in each of our lives. And, and, you know, it speaks here about the, the wonders and signs that were being done by the apostles and we have wonders and signs in our own lives today. When we share our testimony, when we share what God and how God has turned up in our lives. So often we just go about living and we don't recognise that God is even there. You know, last week we spoke about the earth and the creation and we, and we love the images of the, of the mountaintops and the snow-covered peaks and the, and the trees coming down to the, to the still mountain lake. We want to picture those images or we, or we picture the, the, the waves coming in on the surf, on the beach, or whatever, whatever the, the image that we have of, of creation. And yet we go about living life and we get busy and we get rushed and we, and we step by the flower that's at our feet. We give scant regard to the butterfly that flitters by 
and it doesn't even register on our consciousness. Hello God, thanks for being with us. Thank you for the beauty of your creation, Lord, even in the midst of my circumstances. There was an expectation that God was going to be present. Have we lost that expectation as we go about living our lives? And then there's a living out of the expression of what that meant in, in their particular circumstances. Verse 46, verse 45, it says, should they, they should sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any have need. That's how they lived out the expression of, of what it meant to be for them. What are our expressions today? Are they that we should give up all our possessions and sell them and, and come together and everyone be together? Or is that not realistic? I think that the deeper seated element here is that there's a, there's a, a drawing out of a mindfulness of one another as we go about living life. They were mindful of each other and we are mindful of one another as we go about living life as well. Not just ourselves in here, but, but the outreach that we have. And we need to be mindful of others. Sharing with those who are less fortunate, it says. And as we do so, it's an expression of gratitude to God from us for all that God has done. How do we manifest that today in our lives, in our circumstances that we find ourselves right now? Things have changed. We're doing things differently. Yesterday, had a knock on our door. Opened the door, Elaine opened the door, and there was a, a small plant with a little note in it. Simple note just saying, appreciate you, missing you. <clears throat> and then the, the car that delivered it drove off. Needs that are expressed by, by someone who's going through a, a trial at this point in time. And, and a, and a high schooler who says, you know what, I feel like I want to make a contribution, I feel like I want to do something, and, and we found a way of bringing those two together. Simply making the phone call. Simply letting others know that you care. Expressions of mindfulness of one another within the congregation that we find ourselves in, and at the same time reaching out to those as best we can on the outside. They're all expressions of mindfulness of one another as we go about living life. And so what is our call today as we go about doing that? How can we make a difference in, in other people's lives purely because the Spirit says go? have time to think. The final verses, verse 46 and 47, says day by day as they spent time, it reiterates 42, they, they spent time in the temple, they broke bread at home, they, they had food with gladness of hearts and they praised God and, and the goodwill of all the people. And listen to what it says next, day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. You know, maybe our desire to grow, which is one of the things that we speak about, what, is it, what does it mean to be in, a, in a, an alive church? Maybe we inhibit ourselves because we, we try and reach out too much to begin with. Maybe there's simplicity in, our, in the words from the book of Acts today. Simplicity in the fact that it starts with us. How do others know that we are followers of the way? How do others know that we are children of the Most High God? Maybe that's where we need to start. Do we live with an expectation of God showing up in, in our lives and in the lives of others? Because ultimately, we're here to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the good news. That's the good news that, that we hold on to and it, and it made a difference in our lives. We are to take that good news and we're to, to give it on. 
And we do that by devoting ourselves to, to the teaching and the, and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. It all comes together. We have time to, to pause and think about how it is that we go about doing all those things as a body of Christ in this time and in this place. Even as we cannot gather here, it still doesn't stop us from, from doing the things that we're called to do. To express who we are, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said. Brothers and sisters, we come to this table and we come not at our invitation, we come at Christ's invitation. Those who have put their belief and trust in Jesus Christ are, are welcome to come to this table and it is Christ who invites them. We are told that they will come from the north and the south and the east and the west and they will all gather together. We will gather together in, in Christ's presence as I've just said in the sermon. There's, there's lots of things that are, are wrapped up in us simply coming to this table. All that deep meaningfulness of, of who the living God is to us, each and every one of us. We gather and we, we come to this table. And we come as a, a foretaste of the, of the great banquet at the end of time when, when Christ returns. We have, a, we have a small taste of what that's going to be like. We come as a, as a reminder of our everyday meals. As we gather together, whether it be in community, whether it be at home. We gather in the presence of the living God. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, Lord, we come before you with thankfulness and praise for who you are, a God who's mindful of us. Throughout the sands of time, you have, you have interacted and interwoven yourself with your people. And we have rejected you, Lord, and you come time and time again. We thank you for that. We thank you for your desire to be in relationship with us. In the fullness of time, you sent your one and only Son, that he would give his life, that he would endure the cross, and you would raise him from the dead, and we would be in right relationship with you once again. We are grateful and thankful for the Holy Spirit that you've given to us, and we might live life in the manner that you call us to live. Living God, we thank you for our, our relationship with you. We thank you for who you are. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples. And after looking up and giving thanks, he took the bread. And he said, this is my body. It's broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. It's given in my blood, shared for the remission of sins. And whenever you drink of this, do this also in remembrance of me. And brothers and sisters, Whenever we eat the bread, whenever we drink the cup, we proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. God's feast for God's people. Come to the table. This is the body of Christ 
broken for us, the blood of Christ shed for us, take and eat. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for calling us, for claiming us. Lord, help us to, to take what we have been given by you. Your grace poured out upon us in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to go out and be who you call us to be. To live into the claim that you have upon our lives. Not just to, not just to receive what you have given, but to freely give it away as you have freely given it to us. In your Son's name we pray. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that he stands at the door of our hearts and he knocks. He knocks that we would open that door to him and let him in. If you'd like to profess or reprofess your faith or simply talk about what that means, the, the elements that we spoke about today in the book of Acts chapter 2. If you want to just talk about all of that, then give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. And we can uh, start the dialogue about what it means. Brothers and sisters, as we go from this place, as we, as we enter into the world, however difficult that is right now, do we have an expectation that the living God is there? Can we share that with others? As we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you every moment of each and every day. And all of God's people said, Amen. And now, in our isolation, as we are maybe just on our own or, or with family members, let us together recognize that we will stand and that at some time in the future we will be together once again. You're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together we will work till he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side.